Dr. Boyd, the superintendent. sit in their standard seats here yeah um, so as you're called upon to share you'll uh, come right here so in the center is um, will be committee member Martin he's the chair of the subcommittee there's um, and then you just leave it to you for the rest okay. is there anything else that uh, would be helpful to you in terms of procedure process what's gonna happen Ask us. We, more importantly, what are we supposed to say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that all to you.
Okay, so we will call to order this meeting of the Personnel and Labor Relations Subcommittee. If I could ask the clerk to please call the roll. Chairperson Martin? Here. Ms. Del Rossi? Here. Ms. Delay? Here. Three present. Thank you very much. And we'll note that we have our other members in attendance. We have um, Ms. Thompson, I believe, is on Zoom. Yes, I'm here. There you go. And also Ms. Doherty, Ms. Chun, and Mayor Sakari Chow. So uh, we have a single topic on our agenda for the evening. We're going to be meeting with the um, outside counsel that has been selected by the committee to move forward with an HR investigation. Uh, I would like to, I think, begin by letting our uh, representatives here introduce yourselves and your, um, your practice and give us a little sharing both with us and obviously with the public the background and expertise that you bring to this task. On, off, got it. Uh, my name is Leonard Keston. Uh, I am uh, uh, with the firm of Brody, Hardoon, Perkins, and Keston. Uh, if we first formed the firm, I said Brody, Hardoon, Perkins, and me, and they wrote it down as that. Mike Stefanello, I'm a partner with uh, Brody, Hardoon, Perkins, and Keston as well. Uh, we handle, I would say, primarily municipal and uh, school work and our uh, experienced in employment and investigation, and that's why we made the bid for this. We're a, 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 a 15 lawyer firm. I think we're located in the Back Bay of Boston. A major benefit of hiring us is the shopping is great. It's right near New Bridge Street. But we have, we've done, uh, I've been doing municipal litigation. I actually have a background. I, did, I was a uh, substantially separate teacher in a, in, the, in a Boston, city of Boston middle school doing busing. Then I went to work at Walpole Prison. That was easier. Uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, but we've been, uh, uh, I've been out of school since 1983. Uh, 1983. I'm old. But uh, we've been doing, and I've been doing uh, municipal and school litigation since. We do investigations, but the, the primary thing we always offer is until you know, until you do the trial or see what happens in litigation, you don't know the purpose of what you're doing in investigating, discovery, and all this stuff. And that's how it all comes together. So we have, uh, litigated. I hate that term litigation. We've tried. I've tried over 150 jury trials and uh, uh, most of them are municipal cases, uh, school cases, significant school cases. We've established some school, some law. Our cases have made law in, in the school area. Um, have, made, have made law. We've had some high profile investigations and low profile investigations, but uh, it's what we do. You know, when there's trouble, we come. Nobody calls us because it's good. It's the same as being on the school committee, believe me. No oh, one calls I, with good news. <laughs> every time I think about running for something, I come to one of these meetings and say, ah. <laughs> I can appreciate that. So that, that's us. Beautiful. So uh, I think we find ourselves now where we want to uh, kind of launch this investigation. We have some... Um, preliminary information. What I think we're really looking to you to provide us with this evening is how you would want to structure your, your investigation, what resources you're going to require um, from this committee, uh, also from the, the department, um, and kind of if you could sketch out what you feel is the most effective uh, kind of protocol for this so that we can kind of decide how, you know, what we can and can't do. The protocol, it's, it's actually made straightforward. We need to, number one, because we don't have everything yet. We've got very few stuff yet. We've been getting stuff, we've been doing it timely, but I've been reading while driving. Uh, find out, as I understand it, there's, there's we know one that's public, a public complaint that's been out there, so we know about that one, what that, at least what that complaint is. We understand there's six or seven more, uh, so we need to find out what exactly is known right now by the city, by the school system as to what the, the grievances these folks have. Um, what, if anything, has been done about it. If they're, if they're all, I, I don't even know, if they're all grievances about the hiring process, I know at least one is, then we, want, we will go over what is the hiring process, how does, how does it work. You get, get as much information as you can, and then we talk to each complainant and get details of what it is they're complaining about, and then you go from there. 
you know, then it spre spreads out from there, depending on what the complaint is, what, what, the, what the, what are they complaining about? Is, is there, you get all the information you can. I mean, from what, the one we know about, I mean, when somebody talks about hiring processes, you know, um, we have to see. I mean, we always know that people that don't get jobs, there's very few people that say, you're right, I shouldn't have gotten that job that you run into. But we want to find out what, what, what is the, uh, how does it work? How does it work here? How do you do it? Who does what? And then how has it worked in the past? Is there a problem? Is there not a problem? So each step of the way, we communicate with whoever you designate us to, but. Go right ahead, Mr. Rossi. And I think that piece is very key about historical historical information of how this district has always done things. Um, will, will you need information in regards to how Lowell Public Schools has always conducted their hiring practices or like um, in previous superintendents in, as compared to this superintendent? Because I think that's vital. Well, I understand that, you know, in, in all places, it depends on who's running it, you know. So we talk about uh, City of Cambridge, uh, you know, that the, people are complaining, well, what did the previous chief of police or what did the previous mayor do? It's good to know historically, but the, the important thing that we're going to be focusing on, obviously, is if that person says the hiring process at this particular time, is it, you know, was it done? Historically, it's good to know, you know, if things have gone, but we have to talk to the complainants, and then we have to talk to them, I mean, how much do you want to know? Basically, I would think what you want to know is, how is it working now? Is it effective now? Is it good? Does it need improvement? You know, if somebody wants to commission and say, could you take a look 10 years ago under Superintendent X, Superintendent Lenny, that was that terrible? If you're interested in that, we could look. But of vital importance, I would think right now, is to make sure that everything's okay now and going forward. So historically, it's, I mean, if they complain something, if somebody says, you know, I have a grievance from 10 years ago, you'd look at it. See how valid it is. Here it is. I, I guess not so much a grievance from 10 years ago. I'm, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about how internal practices have always taken place within our districts and what is always taking precedent. It's always been a certain practice. I, I mean, I come and I appreciate your statement of you are a sub separate teacher and Walpole was nothing to you because I was a teacher in Lowell Public Schools. I left my position to serve on the school committee. Um, and I was a teacher who struggled to get a position in Lowell Public Schools for a long time because I didn't have the right last name. And so I recognize that the internal practices in this district has been flawed for m much time. Um, and I'm just saying, I don't think, I'm just saying I don't think anything illegal is happening here in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying, I mean, I, I just want you to know that things that have happened in this district over time just may not have been on the up and up, but they may be legal overall. And how will your firm help us to grow? I mean, from there, like what, what would be the end results if now that you're hired, what, what are the end results? Like how would you help us to grow from the place that we are now? Well, ideally, that's exactly what you're looking for, I believe, is to look into how are things operating now under the current administration? Is there how, how <coughs> it's all about hiring? How is the hiring system? Is it is it appropriate? Does it need improvement? We'll work with you. It's what we do. I mean, you know, uh, this firm, the way with this firm has operated, always operated, and continues to operate, is, is looking at something as a problem, not just a job. So, you know, you hire us to do a pothole claim, we may end up saying, you know, you need to look at the DPW as opposed to we'll save you money in the pothole claim. You may want to look at because there's some problem with potholes. So and this is uh, doing this kind of a job. We're being asked to help you solve, if, if this, identify if there's a problem, and if there's a problem, what's the best way forward? 
how does it end up? It's, it's what we do, it's what we're interested in doing. So, of course. But as I say, I mean, I mean the, the historic stuff is the historic stuff. The question is, where, where, where are you now? Where do you, uh, is this a good place or a bad place? Can something be tweaked? And if it can't be tweaked, how do you tweak it? But, you know, in the end, as I always say, all we can do is recommend. Thank you. Mr. Lay. Thank you, Chair. Madam Chair, um, I have a question. Uh, so have you uh, looked into, do a little research on what happened to us and what we're doing, why we're doing this? Just curious if you Very little. Have, In you the have. last couple of days, yeah, we're, we're catching up. Okay. One of us listened to a podcast. We're reading the newspaper. Okay. But we're going we're gonna to. So, we, you know, we started off by, by there was a letter from the city solicitor. Did you see the letter? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm just trying to feel how, how do you feel about um, doing this investigation uh, based on uh, that letter and how do you start? Well, I mean, the, the school committee has decided to do it. Okay. You know, in the end, people can have, people can have, can have opinions or whatever, but the school committee has decided. The school committee runs the show. They want us to do it. We'll do it. I'm sure we'll work successfully with the law department. You know, we're not confrontational. You know, at, at this it's juncture, we have the, we've seen the, I'll call it the complaint, which is really an, an email, a pretty bare bones uh, recitation of, of what was reported to, that initiated this whole process. Uh, we've gathered some documents from <clears throat> Attorney Hall, who's been cooperative with us and, and assisted us in giving us some background information at this point. We are familiar with some of the details of the complaint that was made by uh, the individual, which is now public, because of the press and because of the, the uh, podcast. Uh, and we've received some notes from the law department. Uh, I understand there's been a change, maybe a change in the law department recently. So, you know, what we're going to do next in terms of next steps would be we need to gather all of the documentation relevant to the complaint that came in to the former city solicitor, then the documents that have been gathered uh, and any notes or investigation files that are, that are possessed by the city or the school regarding the uh, additional complaints that have come forward. And at that point, typically what we would do is start with the complainant or complainants and try to understand what is it you're complaining about. What is the breadth of what we're looking at, the scope of what we're going to be investigating? Um, I would imagine, you know, when we're going through this, which happens a lot in investigations, it may be that there are several tangential issues that come up while we're investigating the district's hiring practices, right? And those are things that we would report to whoever it, you, you deem to be our contact person for this investigation. And, you know, but we'll, we'll try to keep this focused, right? Because you could end up years of investigations if you go off of everything everybody said, you know, said happened that they didn't think happened the way that it should have happened. So, you know, well, I understand the directive to have been based on reviewing the documents that were sent to me about the bid and what occurred in the past is you're looking for us to investigate the district's hiring practices with regard to a complaint that was made and articulated to you by the former city solicitor in that email. And then since then, there have been some interviews that have taken place with, I believe, the most recent former city solicitor, uh, who gathered some information from various individuals, some of whom did not want to be identified as part of this investigation, and some who might. And so I think one of, the, one of our steps, next steps will be to speak with those people as well and determine are you willing to speak with us? If you are willing to speak, speak with us, are you willing to speak with us uh, you know, on the record so that we can use this information as part of the investigation? Or are you, I don't want anything to do with the investigation, or I don't want my identity known, which then we start have to you know, having to navigate other types of hurdles where people are pr relaying information to us but aren't necessarily willing to identify themselves as part, as part of the investigation that we're going to then report back to you. 
So we're in a very preliminary stage, but I have reviewed everything that I've been given to date, um, which have been the documents from Attorney Hall and the things I mentioned that are available online. I would like to, and I think that which is, but this is always the case, we need to be given a comprehensive set of everything that exists to date so that we can review it at the outset and then typically the procedure would be to start scheduling the interviews with the complainant, at least the identified complainant, and then perhaps some of these other individuals who have come forward with complaints about the hiring practices. And then from there, we'll have some sense, I think, of what the scope of what we're looking at is. Right now, I think it's, we're somewhat limited in being able to talk in too much detail about what the scope of the investigation will be because apparently six to eight other people have come forward with information that you know, we now have some notes from the city solicitor's office that we received this afternoon, some handwritten notes that are gonna be transcribed for us, but that's the, you know, the scope of what we have. And so you, we, we need to talk to those individuals and meet with them and understand what, were, what are their complaints. And from, from what I understand, those complaints may or may not be related to hiring practices. And for example, if, if there's eight people who came into the law department, but four of them are talking about, uh, I don't like the way my teacher treats my child, that doesn't appear to me to be within the scope of what you retained us to investigate. So we're gonna have to look at those additional complaints and, and determine, does this fit within the scope of what we were asked to do? And, if, and we'll share with you as the client if there were additional things that we learned, but we're not gonna go down off on any tangents unless you authorize us to do that. When we share something with you, okay, yeah, we want you to look into that too, even though it doesn't relate necessarily relate to this. But unless otherwise directed, the scope of what I believe we were retained to do is investigate the complaint that was articulated to Ms. O'Connor prior to her departure, and then any of the related complaints that have come in since then to the, I suppose again, recent city solicitor. So I think that, um, I, I appreciate your handle on the, the kind of situation as it stands right now, and I think you're accurate. I also think, just to broadcast a bit, I don't think we're looking for this to become an expansive, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, investigation. We really are quite focused. What I want us to be um, clear on is, A, so you've received from the solicitor's office the written materials as it relates to the, I think it's a total of seven or eight individuals who came to the solicitor's office and were interviewed by them. You have that information? We received some handwritten notes oh. and a memorandum from the legal department this afternoon. Okay. That's, what I, that's what I have in my possession currently. Okay. We're just is digesting. We're, this, is, this is happening live. As I say, while I was driving, because like, there was a lot of traffic so I could read. So what, I'd, uh, what I think is important to note is that we have gone to, I think, great lengths to ensure the anonymity of individuals who had concerns around that. So it's important that this information is going directly from the solicitor's office to you. Um, and what I would anticipate is that uh, in addition to these seven or eight, it's, you know, I do believe that there are other people who have been uncomfortable engaging with the, the city solicitor's office, but who do have additional complaints that they would like to be considered as part of the investigation. So I think one of the key things I wanted to walk away with tonight was uh, a, a communication mechanism that we can kind of share with our school community so they know how to connect with your offices directly. Well, I think we, we, well, we need, I mean, who, who is the contact person or persons going to be for us, for us, with us? So uh, that would be the next thing, I guess, because I'm trying to understand what it is you're going to need from the, from the district and from the city. Well, if you say, I mean, th there's other people mm -hmm. that you know of, mm -hmm. we need that. So my point is that they need a way to connect with you directly. Um, not a problem. Okay. Yeah, so, and we will provide contact information okay. to you that we, that we would like you to share with anyone who has information that, that is mm -hmm. relevant to the investigation. I think what we'll need from you is assistance in coordinating 
uh, interviews, getting that information to us. There'll be a, a method, obviously, for people to contract, contact us directly without involving anyone from the school or the city. Mm -hmm. But we, we will need someone from the city to help us co coordinate space. I, I assume a lot of these people that want to, that are going to be interviewed are not going to want to drive into Boston for an mm -hmm. interview. So we would be coming to them. And so there will be times when we'll, we'll ask there to be some type of contact person through the school or the city for us to arrange for space to meet with these individuals in order to conduct interviews. Perhaps some of them will want to be interviewed not on I, know, I mean, I would school, suspect not that's at the school, be the case. and, and that, that's fine. Kind of we'll work with them. You know, we'll, it's going to be on an individual basis, a case by case basis, depending on what the reporting party says to us they are comfortable with. You know, some sometimes you do an investigation and record me. I want it all actually recorded. I don't care who knows about it. I actually want everybody to know, and you get that that type yeah. of complainant. And then other times you get somebody who wants to offer information that they think would be helpful to the investigation but doesn't necessarily want you know, to be a named complainant. And, and so we have to work individually with these, you know, the people that come forward to do what they're comfortable with, but also give, giving them an, an ability to contact us. So we'll share information with you to share with anyone whom you believe is looking to contact us. With I mean, it would be part of the public record. I'd want yeah. it to be included in the minutes from sure. this meeting so that it'll Well, the, I tell you, we've been talking about resources already, I mean, Steve, because have, having, well, we just finished, we need, we need some infrastructure here for people where people can go to, then communicate with us, to, and then to set up to help coordinate meetings and space. If people are uncomfortable, some of these people are uncomfortable talking to somebody from the school department or to somebody from the solicitor's office, so we need infrastructure outside of that, I suppose, and a location. So how are you going to communicate with uh, Attorney Hall uh, well, in this process? Well, that's the question for you. <laughs> you know, how, uh, you know. Do we have a contact person from the solicitor's office at this point? I mean, no, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> that's the question. We can, we can certainly work with, with his office. Mm -hmm. Or the superintendents, out, but that's you have to tell us how you want to do it and whether. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Ms. Doherty. Thank you. So um, we'll set up one of you in the trailer. Well, <laughs> I think the uh, the most important thing for me is that we're getting this uh, objective expert involved in this investigation. Well, who's that? To, that would be you guys. Oh, okay, just check. <laughs> and that we get an investigation that, um, as Ms. Martin uh, mentioned protects the identity of the complainants who are concerned about that. So I think that this idea of an office here within the city would be difficult. Um, the other piece of it that is important to me is that we are, you are being hired directly to the school committee. So you'd be reporting to the committee. Um, and that as you, you know, as you know, uh, school committees don't traditionally get involved in personnel matters. I mean, our role is to set school committee policy regarding hiring, uh, to follow DESE regulations and guidelines and state laws. So we're looking to you to help navigate where and when in those situations that these complaints come forward, there are issues that should be brought to our attention that would require action on our part. And, and if it is something like, you know, Joe's not happy, he didn't get the job, that's really not what this is about. Uh, and I would suggest starting with uh, city solicitor, uh, former city solicitor O'Connor as the first person that you interview uh, since that's what really got this whole thing started. And I think that as we look at um, how involved the current administration is, that would really depend on what information you gather and how you feel we should navigate that going forward. So, I mean, and I know it's awkward, right? We're, we're in an awkward situation here. So, because uh, um, in previous investigation, I'm associated with, with the superintendent's office, whatever, but since this is employees, I'm just thinking, so it's not even in the city, we are going to need a location, and we're going to need somebody, at least one person, to help coordinate the meetings. Well, we could do it conceptually out of, if we have a location, uh, we can do it out of our office have somebody in our office 
designated to do that, to take the calls and whatever, or ideally somebody up here, uh, and a location, and then just to find out what we have. Then we go to the next step. What do we have? We have complaints about, you know, you. Then we have to say, okay, we have, how do we deal with that? <clears throat> you in the middle of? I, I just was going to, in terms of gathering that information, with today's technology, could you not have Zoom meetings? Sure. With, with people who come forward, an initial phone call, a Zoom meeting. I don't know that you'd have to be driving up to Lowell, and I certainly don't think our employees would want to be driving to Boston. Um, another option is, you know, meeting at a Starbucks or something like that. Oh. If you wanted to do face-to-face, -face, if people wanted to meet with you face-to-face, -face, but I would think Most. so much of our work is now done using technology that that perhaps would be an option. You know, it, it, uh, I look at it and say, okay, it's maybe it's sort of an initial thing, but there's nothing like seeing the person. Because if you're weighing credibility and all this, I mean, having just lived this for the last two and a half years of taking depositions by Zoom, we lose so much. Whereas now we're back in, you know, there's, uh, people communicate in all kinds of ways that you don't see. So that could be a beginning. And certainly if some people are just uncomfortable, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do what they're comfortable with. But ideally, we also want to record when we do investigations, we like to re record these interviews. If you well, don't record them, what happens? I mean, a lot of people don't do it. And, and what happens, I have a situation now where the person who was interviewed by the investigator says, that's not what I told her. And all she has is notes. Mm -hmm. So now you're into, a jury's going to have to decide who's lying. That's why I always tell people it's best for everybody. So, I'm sorry, if we would... I just want to, one final comment. You can record on Zoom, as obviously. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I, I just would, I want to be clear that it was not my intention. We're not moving toward litigation. We are trying to police our own district. And if there are complaints that have merit, that we need to know about, that we need to address, that is our goal. Um, I think that that we're not necessarily heading down that road to litigation. We're trying to fix Oh, identify if we have real problems and where they are and then address them. No, I think, I think that's understood. And, you know, I, when, when Attorney Kessler's talking, I, we always have the lens of helping you avoid litigation at the end of the day, right, is to make sure that I assume the reason you hired us to investigate is because you want to know, is there a problem? If there is a problem, how big is this problem? And what are some recommendations on how to fix this problem? But while we do that, you know, being attorneys, we also make it a point to protect the district and the school committee to the extent that we can by doing, taking those steps that we know down the road will help us get you in a position where we don't only, not only resolve the issue, but protect the city from liability that may arise from the issue. So, uh, you know, that's just something that we keep in mind. In terms of technology, we can do anything over Zoom. If the people who come forward say, I want to be interviewed and I'm completely comfortable doing this remotely, great. In the past, we've had complainants and or witnesses say they'd rather meet in person. They don't want to do it over, they don't want to do it remotely. And so, you know, our office will be available if that's what, if people want to meet face to face. Um, I suspect at some point there may be people who want to meet and perhaps would rather meet around here and if they're co completely comfortable, would just need somebody administratively to help organize that depending on who the person is and whether they're comfortable with it. But you know, in terms of using Zoom, yeah, if, if, if everybody that we talk to is, is completely comfortable using that platform to share information with us, then that is, you know, that works. With the complainant, sometimes I think what Attorney Kessel was, was alluding to is when you really, when you meet with a complainant the first time, a lot of times it does help to meet them in person because you want to be able to understand the nature of the complaint a, a little more and more about the person, which can be very difficult to do remotely. And, and at times, people that come forward with complaints often feel more comfortable when they're sitting face to face with somebody rather than meeting somebody in a suit and tie for the first time 
over Zoom who's suddenly asking them questions and they don't feel completely comfortable sharing the information. So I think we'll take it person by person if it's a school committee's preference that when possible we do things remotely to save on costs. I think that's completely reasonable and, and we've done it in the past um, in various investigations. So it's certainly, you know, we take our direction in that regard from, from you guys. I, I do think that we need a contact person at from the school committee or, or the subcommittee whom we are going to be reporting to on a regular basis just to coordinate what may c come up. I, I assume we're not going to be able to convene anytime there's a development uh, that quickly. Uh, we want to gather facts. There may be things that we need. There, there has to be some, typically there's somebody, we're investigating for the police department, we're talking to the chief. We're investigating for, you know, a town, we're talking to the town administrator, we're talking to the mayor, whoever it may be. So we, we, it would probably be helpful if there's someone delegated for us to speak with in order to help us gather information. I understand there's some sensitivities about you know, the school committee is retaining us and that may not be the best for us to go through the administration. I, Attorney Hall has been completely helpful and cooperative with us so far, but I, I think it's up to the school committee for, for you to tell mm -hmm. us this is the person we want you to be in regular communication with during the uh, the course of this investigation that. until there's something what? meaningful to report. To, no, I think I the have three to of us. Yeah, that's yeah. that. I mean, that's a key. Yeah. You know, is it so, going to be so somebody from the school committee? Is it going to be the superintendent? Is it going to be the uh, solicitor? It's got to be somebody. So I think the the as we had kind of crafted this from the beginning, it was particularly the subcommittee that would be the contact for you know, for the law firm conducting it. Um, okay. So I would think that that would be kind of your key contact. Makes sense to me that the information can be shared with all three members. Yeah. Um, but then again, any, yeah. anything else would be shared with the full, the full committee. Um, I do want to go to Ms. Thompson, who I know has been waiting with a question, and then we can get into some of the other stuff. Ms. Thank Thompson. you so much, Madam Chair. Um, just first of all, I want to say thank you so much to um, the law firm for being here because this is the culmination of many, many months of people waiting for resolution. And I think that our district sorely needs it. Um, one quick comment and then I guess a question. Um, I think, you know, as you were going through things um, and I think Ms. Martin just kind of clarified it. I think our goal um, to protect the people who have already come forward and those who do want to do so as well. We're trying to eliminate or we're trying to limit as many district touch points as we can. So um, to kind of aid in the sensitivity and continued anonymity for um, the people who are going through the process. Now, one question I had is that you did speak to, um, you know, at some point wanting people to kind of want to go on the record and I entirely understand that. I guess my question would be for the people who are watching and are curious about that, at what point would, and what does that mean? You know, so at what point are they going to be sharing their name and does them sharing their name mean something bigger, um, external from the conversation with you? I think people are, you know, kind of, that have never been through this, don't really know what to anticipate. And then um, I guess my second question would be, um, at what point, and when you say regular communication, what does that mean for you all? And again, I'm just really excited. Sorry, I didn't feel well, so I didn't want to be in the chambers with you all, but wanted to make sure to weigh in. Well, first of all, great picture for a background. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great moment in time. Uh, well, regular you. communication means, I mean, as, as things develop, you learn something or you get some complaint that's hot, you need to talk to your client. That's how it always works. Um, um, that's what we mean. In terms of anonymity, I mean, at the end of all this, I expect you will want us to produce a report. And the report may or may not be a public record. Almost likely will, will not be a public record. So with any know, names. It will be. So we, we, we'll work, we do the best we can to keep people anonymous, but if, as long as we know who they are. But even if we don't, you know, it's just you weigh them less. As, as a matter of law and practice, you take an anonymous complaint is not weighed as heavily as somebody who steps up because any you know that's just the way you do, when you look at credibility whatever you're going to believe so if people are truly afraid we'll do the best we can but given you know the presumption when you're a public body as you know and we work for public bodies everything everything is public 
that we don't have secrets. So but my understanding would be that we'd be able to receive a report that whether it has the names redacted or I mean that is a key thing for us because yeah. as members of this committee we don't want to know the names you, that it would be inappropriate so it's key, what's key for us is that you know certainly as people are coming forward to you and identifying themselves but I think it's important for people to know that I would not envision there ever being a, a public report that listed out eight names and and what the results of that report were we're ensuring where the reason we're going outside is so that we have that buffer so that people can be, you know, honest and, and, and feel comfortable sharing that information, you know, when they know they may have a 20 year career left that they want to have here in the city of Lowell. So I, I just think that, you know, that's the, it, the, the report is absolutely public and would be shared, you know, it, it, through all the, you know, proper channels. Um, but the actual names can be redacted or just simply, you know, just don't, don't need to be part of that public reporting. You're correct there. However, just, uh, we always tell people, you have to understand, what if, you know, I come forward, I don't want my, I don't want my name put in the report, but I won't tell you that Michael Stefanillo has been discriminated against me and he's a terrible human being, and then you do something, you take some action against Michael Stefanillo, he's entitled to know who it is. Mm -hmm. I think we're talking down down the line. Down right? the I mean, there, there, there's, we'll do what we can to keep, you know, confidentiality mm -hmm. intact to the extent that the people whom we speak with are requesting that, and to produce something to you because it's important to you as the client to get something that doesn't have these identities in it. We'll have the identities, obviously, because we know who we're speaking to. Uh, with that said, we'll have this conversation with the people who come forward too. We'll explain mm -hmm. to them. You know, if you tell us something and then we describe an incident in a report, right? I mean, it's only so big of a city, there are going to be clues about anything anybody says that, that potentially could tip other people off as to who informed us, no matter how discreet we are. Otherwise, what we'll produce to you will be useless. Okay? You, we won't be able to actually describe what anyone told us in any, in any type of detail. And I think that's the expertise that we were looking for. And the, and <laughs> in, the other thing going that with your company, everybody yeah. listening and you need to understand, they have legal protection. I mean, if mm -hmm. somebody comes forward in this investigation, they have legal protection. They cannot be retaliated against for coming forward. Yeah. That's the law. So, you know, uh, so we're in favor. oftentimes you know, in litigation that we've handled, it's not the original thing. It's the retaliation for coming forward. Mm -hmm. so you have somebody that, you know, you have a a female that comes forward saying the sexism in the police department, and then, then bad things happen. Go right ahead, Eileen. Ms. Dorsey. I guess in, in the same respect, and being a whistleblower in a case that needed immediate action in the case of safety, in the case of, of students, where I had to go to my immediate supervisor, and, and there was immediate action. Like, there is nothing in terms of that at, at this point that is happening right now that immediate, like, mm -hmm. that has to be addressed at this point that it seems like uh, that. Not that you know of right now. Right, okay, well, because sorry. that that to me, when I hear whistleblower, like, in having been in that position, and having to have realized, like, the repercussions of what that takes, it's not comfortable, and I get that. It's not. And things happen because of that, and I 100% understand that. And, and I just wanna make sure that everybody is safe at the same time, in, in this district and in this situation. And, and you know, as, I, as I told you, I mean, the people that come forward to, to this investigation have legal protection. They cannot be retaliated against. No. What actually happens, we know, but they have to be assured that there's legal protection. You cannot, somebody can't retaliate against you because you come forward to an investigation. But yeah, I mean, you have to also be upfront with people, right? I mean, th there is a reality to what we're, do what we're doing. We are going to report back to you what we discover, even if we keep names anonymous. And, you know, we may recommend X, Y, Z, and then you decide, you know what? Recommendation Z is what we need to do that may end up disclosing what was originally told to us, the identity of who told it to us, because it's a, it's a discrete issue that you're now taking action because of or you're changing a policy or revisiting a practice that
people are going to know, well, that had to come from somewhere. And we want to be, our practice is just be as open and upfront with the people who are speaking with us as possible at the beginning of the interview so that they understand that while it is our goal to keep their name confidential, that by nature of what is occurring, this process itself, there are, there's always a chance that someone will, down the line, will figure it out whether we identify them or not. And that is something that I find is better explained to them at the beginning of the process rather than after it's already happened. Yeah, we're not going to, we are like snowing people. No, and I'm sorry, to clarify, at the point that I did it, it was an immediate, I had to go to my direct supervisor, yeah. and it was an immediate situation that was had to t be taken care of. And I just want to make sure that nobody is in that type of a situation in this district right now. Well, we hope that. What? We hope that that's true. Right, and I just, and, that, and that's, when I hear that, that is, the, like you, you see what happens in a building. The investigators come. People are let go you, you, immediately, and it is a direct reflection on somebody that was new or reported. So, it you understand what that is. So, I guess in my. I guess that, that it obviously through all of this, at this point it's been many months through since all of this has started. So obviously at this point probably nobody would really know where it's coming from because there are so many people that are able to come out at this point and report what they want, right? Mr. Light. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, just to follow with my previous question, so I am glad that you spent time uh, do a little research before coming here tonight. And uh, I was hoping that uh, tonight I would see some layout step by step. This is what you plan to do. Step number one, step one, number two, number three. You don't have that yet, right? And so um, anyway, I, I hope that that would help me understand uh, what you want to do, uh, and also I, I wonder what your opinions are on the, the role of the school committee uh, and the roles of the, uh, of the uh, superintendent in terms of this hiring and, and uh, this accusation uh, that the people are bringing. Uh, and I also want to know uh, what your opinions are uh, like you said, you wanted to see if we could protect from litigation, protect the city from going to court. Uh, are, we, are we violating any existing contracts by doing this investigation? Have you looked into uh, uh, stuff like that? Uh, so, so th to address the question of next steps, I think that there's two things going on. One is we just received information about this this afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. So, um, you know, that does limit us a little bit in terms of what we can tell you and after reviewing the documents because we reviewed them once and very quickly. Um, so the steps, I mean, they're very simple, so I don't know that you need a layout. It's, I need all the documents. I need all the relevant documents, all of the files, all of the records that are, that are relevant to this investigation produced to me in full so that we can review them. Then we will schedule interviews with the complainant and or complainants that are known at this point to identify what is the scope of what's being complained about and to determine what's related to our directive as in terms of investigating the district's hiring practices and what may be a complaint that's completely unrelated to what you've retained us to do. And then we'll understand what the scope of the complaints are. We'll have the, all of the relevant records in our possession. We'll interview Ms. O'Connor, I imagine, if not first, then after, along with side the complainants. And at that point, we'll be able to assess for you what does the scope of this investigation look like? What did these six people say happened? What, you know, 
perhaps that could be a very narrow uh, investigation. It could be that these six people are, are giving us information that we feel compelled to report to you. This looks like a broader issue. This looks like a broader issue that implicates your policies. This looks like a broader issue that implicates uh, personnel, which we can't discuss here. But those types of things may come up, and at that point, we report to you that the investigation has revealed X, Y, Z. How do you want us to proceed? Do you want us to continue down with this narrow lens and focus only on this hiring issue that's been that was brought to your attention? Do you want us to now interview other people that have been identified as having information that may bear on tangential issues? Right now, I understand the directive to be pretty narrow and the steps that we're gonna take to be pretty concrete, meaning review the documents, interview the complainants, interview Ms. O'Connor. At that point, we would have a better handle on what else, if anything, needed to be done before we could give you the recommendation that you're asking for? I know, Mr. Chun, if, can I just ask a couple just to the, on that specific? I, I would say I understand Ms. Doherty's point, but I, I don't feel that interviewing our former solicitor is really necessarily part of your first step. I mean, to me, the whole point of this was that we're taking the actual individuals and giving them a venue so that they can present this information to an outside observer. Um, I mean, if something came up that you that you wanted to, con you know, ask a question, but I don't think that that Ms. O'Connor wouldn't be my first call. Um, I, I really think the way I envision this is that individuals are coming to you directly, and that is going to direct your investigation. <clears throat> I mean, I think that's going to lead you where you need to go. It always does. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I really think that the, the key to this is making the connection for, uh, you know, the, the impacted staff, the one who is, you know, who you're very well aware of and then the others, that they have the appropriate conduit to get directly to you. I understand you're getting the, you got the information from the, from the solicitor's office, but the reality is, is that this should be a very direct conversation between these individuals and your firm. Um, and then the investigation should go from there. To Mr. Lay's point, I would say I would like to see a timeline. I think that it would be appropriate after about a week, maybe two, I defer, you can let me know um, what you think is appropriate, that we should get a timeline that lists out, you know, anticipated completing interviews, anticipated, you know, reviewing documents. When you think, you know, and, and it may change over time given, you know, because these things I'm sure can, you know, ebb and flow like anything else. But I think if we can have a target within, you know, a week that would be submitted to this subcommittee would then be shared with the full committee and publicly so that we have the kind of skeleton of, of what you're anticipating. I think that would be extremely helpful. I'm sorry, Ms. Chun, I'm sorry to make you wait. I apologize. Thank you, Madam Chair. And basically my colleagues covered it all, what I've had in mind. But especially what you just mentioned just now, that give us a timeline of when uh, the steps in the process that you're doing the investigation and stuff. But in reality, um, I want to know, after all the process and the steps that's been done, um, how long would this whole thing would take for us? I, I, roughly a month or two, though. You know, I'm just giving a rough estimation. Of give us a time where this whole investigation will be done when you're interviewing the complaints and, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Well, as to that, I mean, we're way too early to, to do anything like that. What we have to do is, or I sense, I understand there's an urgency to this. It's clear. So we're going to get right on, you know, first we want to make sure we have all the materials that are out there, read them. That should not take any time at all. Then we started interviewing the complainants. But as you said, what's going to happen? unless this is the most unusual investigation we've ever had, is they'll say, you've got to talk to so-and-so, you've got to talk to so-and-so. Somebody else will call. Right. That's when we'll see. You know, are we talking to eight people with, with a, a couple of, uh, with certain events, or are we talk, or are there 50 people? I well, thought there was only two people, uh, and one of them came to, uh, came to the uh, media and explained to the, to the newspaper, you may have read, and there's, I think there's only one more that, that we didn't know who that person was. There's one more, but that there's, was there's, six, there's six others, apparently, who have come forward, and this is going to cause. So we received the information this afternoon that would suggest that the city solicitor's office has recently interviewed eight 
individuals who came forward with information. Eight additional individuals. Additional, in addition to, in from my understanding, in addition to the public, the now public complaint, the one that was previously referred to as anonymous, which I have no data on whatsoever, um, and then there are eight additional people, two of which, my understanding is, have absolutely nothing to do with hiring practices. But again, I didn't speak to them, so I'm just going off what was told to me. Two of them don't have to do with hiring practices. Those are issues that are outside the purview of what we've been retained to do. But apparently, there are six more that might. And so from my understanding, now the, the scope of the complainant uh, potential complainants right now is the public one and potentially seven others that have offered information about that is relevant to the investigation that we've been retained to conduct. And so as a starting point, typically you would start by talking to those people to understand what the nature of the complaints are. And then, like Lenny said, we go from there. Are they, these we're talking about discrete acts. Are, we, are, there, are, we, are they suggesting that there are, are there others that come forward? Are there others that, there, that five of the seven are saying, we really need to interview this person, that we then want to reach out and contact that person? Maybe they don't want to speak to us. Maybe, maybe they do. So I can give you, you know, we can give you a rough timeline, and I definitely think we can produce that and give it to you tomorrow. I mean, that's not difficult for me to sit down and say, based on the fact that we have X number of complainants and, and you know, why records that we're aware of. It'll take us, you know, a week to review the records and, you know, ideally, assuming schedules cooperate, we can within the next month get all of eight of those interviews scheduled and conducted and then give you a preliminary and, and touch base on a preliminary basis after that first step is done, then we'd be able to give you an idea of what the, what step one has produced at that point. Uh, General timeline's fine, but, like, but I think there, there'll be a check-in, right, at some point to try to give you a sense of what did we learn after talking to these, these complainants. And again, like I said, the records that we received today, I just have, we just received them. There hasn't been enough time for me to give you an idea that you know, I don't even know, besides giving them a rough read, how much, you know, how we're going to roll up the sleeves, how deep are, the, are these complaints going? Uh, and that's something that I think I'd like to take a look at before I commit sure. to you to, to a time, like a, an official timeline. But within a, let's say within a week, I will give the school committee, whoever my contact is, mm -hmm. a rough sense of what we okay. think based on the scope of what we have. And again, that's assuming that I have someone at the city and the school department who's going to cooperate with me to produce all the records that they, that I need in order to evaluate this matter, assuming I get the records in a timely fashion and am able to reach out, you know, reach these complainants and schedule interviews, we should be able to give you a, a, a general sense of what we're looking at. Okay. In an ideal world, it would be as fast as possible. Absolutely, so Ms. Thompson has a question. Hey. Yes, thank you so much. Um, so uh, to the attorneys, just want to note that, you know, we gave the city's office um, several weeks. So I know that you're going to be very intentional about your time. So I know we're going to rely on your expertise and to get us something. And I appreciate you trying to give us some semblance of that. But since we did give several weeks and then push back of additional weeks, um, we're going to offer you the same level of, re of respect in order to get us a, a timeline that does work and is respectful of, of all the things that you just mentioned. Um, just a quick question, because you did note that several of the complainants were um, HR-related issues of some sort. Have you received or do you need um, the processes of how hiring happens in the central office as well as how principals conduct um, the hiring because they are quite different. So I was just wondering if you have access to that and or if you do need that from the district. Well, I anticipate, of course, we will, but we have to, as I say, it's step by step. You, wanna, you want to specifically talk to each complainant and ask them what it is they see. They will in, inevitably tell, suggest talking to some other people that have other issues get the scope of the issues, see what, what's being complained about, and then look at, yeah, if it's hiring, it's gonna be hiring at every level. Yeah, whatever whatever report is reported to us that's implicated by way of policy, we ov obviously will need to review what the relevant yep. policies are that we are evaluating. Right. So uh, we'll gather the information from those who are making 
you know, making the complaints. Uh, but I, I also don't want to waste your time or money either reviewing five policies if the complaints are only limited to two specific policies, <laughs> right? So, you know, the, the best way from our perspective to, to really get a handle on what it is that we're dealing with is to talk to the people who are complaining to figure out what it is they're complaining about and then to, from there, try to understand what is it that we need to know or need from you in order to evaluate the, those complaints and, and their impact on the school committee. Yeah. Ms. Doherty. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to, since we have mentioned the city law department uh, a number of times at the meeting tonight, I wanted to point out, and I don't know that this is something that you are aware of, but even after we made the vote, first we made the vote on December 14th, to go outside, majority of the committee voted. But again, on March 15th, uh, the law department continued to solicit uh, complaints to come forward to them. So I, I really think that we're, we're looking at you speaking with these complaints directly, and that any future complaints should be going directly to you um, and not through that intermediary. And then in supporting the idea of protecting the identity of the complaints, I think that Ms. Martin, you would be the contact person then, and we would do it through the personnel subcommittee so that you would schedule it, we would all be polled, and we, okay, I, I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, in terms of time, the central constraint that always happens is the scheduling of the interviews. You have to throw around their schedule, the complainant's schedule, our schedule, so. We could also, I mean, depending on, on because I think your first, your, obviously your opening salvo is to, to reach out to all your, uh, all anyone who may, whose names we already have. Right. Um, I think we could be uh, helpful in finding you a, a neutral space um, at one of our community partners, perhaps that, you know, we have some workspace partners around the, you know, in Greater Lowell that we'd be able to. It makes people much more comfortable. Yeah, I think that would be, yeah, so we could certainly, that's we could of need, that's, we could certainly do that. I'll bring, I'll bring pastries. I'm sorry? <laughs> no, that really helps put people at ease. Okay. Yeah, food. I'm not gonna say no, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would put out, if there are any other questions, concerns? So what, what we can anticipate now from, from this meeting is that we'll be getting a, a rough timeline in about a week that we'll be able to share publicly. It will also include the contact information for individuals who would like to reach out to you directly. To us directly. Exactly. We um, do that tonight. We should get the contact information out to the public right away because that way you're gonna get a sense of how many more complainants are there if we have identified potentially seven, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you're at liberty to give that number or you want to... No, no, we could, the phone number is easy. We're just, I'm just to figure out... Who's the, to talk who's the person? Who we, you know, we need a person. Um, we'll need to but if you could we'll maybe... Today. We'll get that to you shortly. Okay, because we have our full meeting on Wednesday, a week from today. And I'll be reporting out from this subcommittee so I'd be able to include in it that information. Right. Perfect. Well, Honestly, it's else. likely to be myself. Okay. But then, uh, before, <laughs> Michael, I, before I say that, Michael, no. <laughs> let us. Not, let it's us. not going to be yourself. <laughs> He's got enough to do. We need somebody that's dedicated to it. Sure. So we'll. Yeah. If we can get that information in the next, you know, short yeah. while. We'll be able to include it when we report out publicly next week. Um, are there any other? Yes, Mr. Lake. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. So, just I just want to take this opportunity to ask for your legal. Uh, advice or legal opinion. Now that each time that somebody don't like something, they just want to go ahead and try to complain and we hire outside counsel. Is this something that we're setting up a, a something that never seen before? I mean, there will be, there's always someone complaining about the hiring now that now that we're doing this, how, how, how do you see that in, say, next year, someone applied, didn't get the job, now they complain, oh, something happened, now we have to go through this process, hire outside counsel to investigate that. How, how do you see that? There's no legal 
opinion on something like that. It all, it, it's situational, and every public body has to make a decision, you know, as to as to how they're going to handle things. So, I guess can I ask? Can can one question that you add in is have you gone through if it's a teacher? Can, have you gone through the union grievance policy that is established because there is an established union grievance policy that all teachers know about you know what i mean because this is you know <coughs> unprecedented what we're doing you know what i mean and and i just there are processes that have been put in place throughout all time and you know just look at history when you skip over the grievance pro like union processes and grievance processes whether or not people agree with them or not it, it's just not historically good and just but overall just I think it's a good question to add in to you guys asking to just see if they've reached out just I'm not just to a dipstick overall oh you. you're absolutely right and of course I mean that's uh, you know what did you do what did you do when you didn't get the assignment you wanted did you file a grievance or did you just do a podcast you j jump right to the podcast you know I mean you know you look at that and say yeah of course and you know there I, I understand that and I understand the concern that every time somebody's unhappy about something they're gonna pressure the school committee to launch an investigation but I expect I mean you're a public body you make your you make decisions uh, appropriate decisions as to how you view things it doesn't mean you're gonna do it every time I can't imagine it but but it's not a legal opinion the school committee can do what it wants there's, no, there's nothing that compelled you to bring us in to do this investigation from a legal standpoint that we that we can see, right. um, but that doesn't stop public bodies from doing that all the time if there are issues that they find are sensitive enough and or potentially widespread enough that it warrants bringing in somebody with a with an unbiased and fresh lens to look at it and give a recommendation and or advice so I mean it's difficult you know we're not able to say after we give you a recommendation how you move forward how you move forward after that okay. so so uh, so pre uh, originally there were two complaints that brought us to, to all of this that get this ball rolling and so now that we are in the process we all we keep on advertising Anybody else have any complaint? Come forward, come forward. Uh, when we do that, is it the right thing? I mean, when we keep on saying, hey, come on, come on now, and complain, just come over. Uh, so is that the right thing to do, counsel? Sir, it's, it's not a legal opinion as, as to you know, what, you, what, what you do. Everybody has to, you know, yeah, some people say that, and other people would rather tell people just shut up and take it. So I, does, I can't give you a legal opinion on it. There's nothing in, in the law, but I, I... Are there any other questions, concerns? I have another question, I'm we sorry. Will, yep. We will I'm sorry, do our Ms. best to weed out. Right. We're obviously going to look at stuff and say, you know, right. we've heard from these 30 people, and that's nonsense. There's no reason to investigate. Ms. Thompson? Um, first of all, I appreciate you saying that because, again, everybody has a different experience um, from as someone who has gone through um, a grievance process and then still was ignored. Um, at a former employer, I think it's so important to one, just like any other victim, if they are really victims, to not necessarily shame them or make them feel bad about coming forward when they it takes courage to do so. Um, and that again is your job. You're going to filter through what is not um, factual and then what is, um, because you, that is that is what you do. Um, I just also want to make mention, and Ms. Del Rossi brought up something about going through the grievance process. We also have um, staff that is not a part of a union, and they may also be coming forward. And so they would not have the same process. So I want that to be something that we also keep in mind as we, as we navigate through this. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. By Mr. Rossi, seconded <laughs> by Mr. Lay. All those in favor say aye. Oh, um, oh, I always okay. wanted to vote. All, of, it's, it's, all those in favor say aye. Thank you very much. Aye. I never get to say it. Thank you. <laughs> Always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.